Welcome back everybody. We have another clock to work on. Oh my gosh. Anyway, this here, it's not actually the clock, it's the movement. And it's a, uh, well, let's show you. This here is the movement. It's a cuckoo clock manufacturing company incorporated made in Germany cuckoo clock. The numbers down here, are the 100 slash 171 slash 24 have no idea what that means anyway this here is quite oily it's not necessarily the dirtiest quite oily it does have hairs on it and whatnot which is normal for cuckoo clocks because they are an open case and you can already tell some of this is off already it might have came off in the mail and we're going to clean this movement, re-oil it, hang it up, and see how well this thing's doing. So we're going to go ahead and take this apart. When you, you should take pictures, because pictures are your best friend. When you take this apart, pay attention which way you're taking the pictures. For example, when I take this apart, I normally have the nuts here. And so I'm going to take the pictures like this. So when I put the clock back together again, I understand that the gear is supposed to look like this when I set it back down in there. Don't forget to take a picture of this, especially if you haven't uh, torn one of these apart before. A special picture of this because you need to remember which side the rod goes on to hold the cuckoo bird out as he's cuckooing. The arms, now hopefully you've taken pictures of this while it's still hooked up, but normally your longer arm would go to the bellows on the, let's say, right side as it's facing you, and this one would go to the left side So you have just a very light gong, I see. Doesn't move very much. And in order to get this to move further, it does have a paddle on there that hits the star wheel inside here. And that can be bent just a little bit more down. But be careful when you're bending these things because if it's not having a problem, you start bending them you might put such a stress on it that instead of moving just a little bit, moving a lot is going to be too hard on the clock to actually keep it cuckooing it instead of getting stuck. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take all this front stuff off. This here. Like I say in all the videos normally, but in case you're new here and this is the first video you've seen, this here is what tells the clock what hour it is when this here gear here drops down. And when this gear here drops down, let's go ahead and get to drop and I'll show you. Watch this here. There's the half hour. This doesn't drop on the half hour. See how the, all this stuff's going up because it's getting ready to cuckoo. There it dropped all the way down. And you notice we have teeth here. These teeth on this one, it drops down onto here. This tells it what hour it is. And because it dropped there, it clicks into the area that will now count the hours. Now this here will count the hour or however many hours it's supposed to be. Four, five, six. So it's six o'clock and it shuts it off. The bird goes back in. Nice to have a magnetic screwdriver. 
These are nice big clips on here, easy to get on and off. So we have those two off. Now for the newbies that are taking these things apart, as you take layers off, such as these two are a top layer we'll say, including that there we took off, now we can get the snail off. We can get this one off that counts your hours. We can take this off that turns the minute hand and is it hooks into here and this here you can see it turns the minute hand also oh excuse me this is the hour hand on this one here and now for the newbies like, like I say now's the time to maybe take a picture so you can see where these are setting and of course it's got this spring on here that you can just pop off and now it's ready to go on this one there's a clip right inside here so we can get that one out It's not that easy to get out, so let's take this one out first. And this one inside here has a clip, just like the rest of them I've taken off. So we should be able to get this one out just fine now. Okay, to make it easier, <laughs> we're going to take the arm off that holds the bird. This here has a spring hooked up right here. We're going to go ahead and flip the spring off. My battery died. So to get this off, be careful because you don't want to break these. You normally put a screwdriver in here and rock it back and forth a bit so you can loosen it up. Then with a little bit bigger screwdriver, pop them up. We have that off. Now we should be able to get this one off. And like I say, you notice where the this rod here is, I guess we'll say, lever, whatever. It's on this side of this. And this just flops around, so you got to remember which way it goes on here. Now we can get this lever out. This one here goes inside the movement and this here will catch the warning pin which will be part of your timing in order to get the rod to drop down into as Mark calls it the Pac-Man. It needs a drop right here in the bottom. Even if it doesn't go clear to the bottom it has to be in that area. And so this is all the further I'm going. This here will come out. Don't take it out, in my opinion. It's kind of part of the timing. And the way to get it out, you need a bigger screwdriver and you pry a little bit on both sides. And this disc will come off. In my opinion, the only reason why you're taking this off is because this pin here broke. 
that makes it uh, slowly move around to, to count the hour. I'd suggest not taking that off. Now this one here, I almost forgot to look. We have a barrel here and this barrel holds this gear up high enough that it'll turn we'll say the hour hand shaft. So pay attention to that if you lose that and you can't buy it, find another one to buy, you're going to have to stack up washers or you're going to have to stack up whatever it's going to take to get this gear high enough that it meets with the uh, our hour hand shaft. It's a good thing I caught that. Trust me, I've lost one before. <laughs> anyway, so this whole side is done. These here clips we're going to take off next and what those go to is the gong and the two arms here. So I'll take them off and kind of explain what, what's in there. So I got the last two out. So here, these here are just flopping around right now. Let's take the gong off first. If you'll notice, Right in here on each of these there's a slot for the rod or paddle that hits the star for it to slide out on. Now putting these back in you need to pay attention on this one. The gong comes out first then the shorter arm and then the longer arm. Here again, you got the paddle. And here you can see the slots where you're able to get it out from. So while we're over here, let's go ahead and take this out. This here goes into locking the bird into place. It has another E-clip here, but that's not that necessary to take out. You can if you want to get this out of the way right now and install this later. Not positive if this one will come out because it's a little bit different. It's got the nut in the way or the bolt in the way that's stopping this from dropping much further. Just checking this, it looks good, it's open. Normally open tells me it hasn't fallen on the floor. Usually when they fall on the floor, the pendulum crams up in here and it shoves this hard enough, especially if it's a heavier weighted clock and it'll twist closed and then your pendulum will start swinging like this in which event there's a chance if it swings bad enough if you can get your clock to run again after falling off the wall, that the pendulum could hit the weights. Get this onto the legs, and then we'll go ahead and start taking it apart. The reason why I want to put it on legs is because I have this shaft here, and I don't want the, all the movement to fall apart, especially for the new people. You want to be able to get this plate off and hopefully take a picture without this plate in the way of what the gears look like and which direction, let's say, such as these two here, the winders, which, which way they're supposed to be sitting. I have the legs. You can get a coffee cup and set here to hold this thing up. Uh, a dessert dish, as long as it's deep enough, and that's about two inches, but normally dessert dishes are a little bit deeper than that. I'm talking about the small ones, not a big one because we're supposed to be light eaters, right? 
In fact, let me go get a cup and I'll, I'll just show you. This was a special cup. I used to go to their channel a lot. In fact, I haven't got my picture on there. And her husband kind of went off the deep end and he's still got a channel, but it's a little strange. <laughs> anyway, here we have it on here. We'll call it not too perfect because where the bird hangs on, it's kind of in the way. This is a big cup anyway. You can have a smaller one. It doesn't matter. Our shaft is pointing down. That's all that matters. Let me take these nuts off and we'll go from there. We got all four nuts taken off. Now let's take this apart as careful as we can. We know the pendulum uh, part's gonna, might mess things up a little bit. We just have to be careful. Because what we're after is to possibly get a picture with all the gears setting in their rightful spot. That doesn't look too bad at all. So now that we have this out, it's good to get a picture in here. And what you're looking for is trying to get a picture so you can see what each gear looks like and the placement of it so you can get this thing back together again. So having the picture, whatever angle, the key thing to remember is where the winders go and are they sitting this way or sitting this way. Like I said, it starts getting confusing when you're trying to put this thing back together again. And that's why I keep saying pictures are your best friend. So anyway, these are set up as, as they call them, trains. The one train would be the time. This train would be the cuckoo. So let's start with that one. And if you haven't already, this is a good time to check this out, make sure it's grabbing. And it feels good. This one won't come out because this here is the one that's stuck to that Pac-Man wheel or the wheel that counts on here. Let's get this one out because it's easier. The fan. And the fan looks like it's in good shape. It's not broke besides a few hairs on it. We'll take this one out. This one has the little warning pin on it, which that's part of your timing that you're going to have to set. And I'll explain that in this video if I have to set it. Nine times out of ten, I do have to set it. We can take this out now. I can say that one's in there because of the Pac-Man part and I'll show you that in a little bit again. So we'll take this winder off. It's got the big wheel on it. It's holding good. Doesn't sound bad. The clickers in here, this happens to have a good clicker. And what I call a good clicker, it's got the spring that comes around and hits a little lever right there compared to a disc with these plates on it that I don't like that well. So that one will stay because that's pressure fitted and we'll talk about that one in a second. This is really oily. No big deal. We'll get that all cleaned up. But considering, I mean, it's a little dirty, 
looking inside the gears you can these here you can see some build up of dust and whatnot so this here this here that goes to this one goes to the minute hand and the one that goes over this goes to the hour hand but anyway the reason for this to keep the hands from just flowing around on the willy-nilly and maybe not even turning and whatnot this has a spring in here and this here was pressure fitted down on here to snug this up enough to hold this tight when all the gears are together this is hooked to as Mark calls it the Pac-Man and like I say I don't want to take this off it's supposed to be a little bit sloppy I haven't seen a clock yet where it's really tight and there's a lot of stuff that you or I shouldn't say a lot a few of these items in here you don't want too tight because a cuckoo clock movement the more friction it has the worse it is for the clock and has a good chance of not running so anyway this is all the further I'm going to take this apart and say so you still see some hairs on here and whatnot uh, with this one as dirty as it is and as oily as it is I'm going to probably take it in the house and rinse it with hot water and done dishwashing soap just to get, just so I'm not polluting as much in my uh, clock cleaning fluid I use a sonic cleaner and you don't need a sonic cleaner all that does is makes my job faster but still after it's all clean dried and whatnot you're gonna take a round pointed toothpick and in each one of these holes where the gears go through you do it on one side and come to the other you twit excuse me you twist it around in there and you'd be amazed how much dirt actually doesn't come out including when it's gone through a movement cleaner and whatnot so let me get these things gathered up the small washers and whatnot obviously I'm not about to throw in the water well and they're, they're gonna get in there eventually but I have this I do believe they call it a tea strainer or something I will put all my small parts in here but even with this you have to watch it because some of these washers once you have this thing closed up let's see if I can get it it's, once you have it closed up you still have a hairline crack we'll call it through here and right there and if you start shaking this too much those eclipses and whatnot will start trying to come out of here especially those super teeny ones and so you just make a special note of that you can use this in the sonic cleaner or you can use it in when you're washing it with a uh, Dawn dishwashing soap if you have it all tore apart like this and you can get it pretty clean that way too I don't know why but I'll throw that gear in there uh, I like to throw the fan in there because it's lightweight and my other baskets sometimes they're a little bit too big of a hole and it likes to fall through there I think that's it I'm gonna put in this basket and then the so all of this here now will just get put in a bowl and then I'll wash it with like I say hot water and Dawn dishwashing soap just to get it a good rinse and then I'll put it in my sonic cleaner so as you can see I've got two different baskets this basket here only has the two plates it does it looks new enough that it has a lacquer sprayed on it and so I don't want that to come off and so I'll just leave it in there for a few minutes and like I say these plates are pretty clean looking anyway so it's not going to take much to get them cleaned up and so that's why I have the two baskets now if you're looking for a clock cleaner go to my 
videos and on the playlist, I, I think it's in the cuckoo clock section, uh, there's a homemade recipe there that you can do to clean your movement if you like to without buying a ton of the stuff. And mine is for a two gallon ultrasound cleaner, but you can cut the recipe in half or whatever it's going to take to be able to still cover the movement and get them to clean up. I didn't put it in the video because I found out later you use a half a cup of Murphy's soap or uh, Murphy's soap because that there is supposed to help shine the brass up especially on your older movements. This one here is not important because it's all real shiny already but on your older movements that's what is nice to use that stuff only thing too. about this movement but this might have been cleaned before I only had it in the cleaner for about five minutes and I noticed that this thin film of uh, lacquer is already coming off the lacquer doesn't do anything for this but to shine it up so it looks sharp but then again who cares it's inside the box so the back plate like I say it's actually got a shine but you can see the stuff coming off of it the lacquer we're going to try this on there I've done this before I'm only going to clean this back plate because when you open up the cuckoo clock you got the bellows in there and everything this is the only one you're going to see. I'm not going to worry about the inside. I'll make sure there's no loose flakes or anything else. And after I'm done doing this, then I can make sure to put the toothpick in here and get them clean. Now, I did a bushing video. The only reason why you'd be bushing these is these brass plates are pre-drilled and whatnot and so the gears will fit in there when this clock is used heavily we'll say they'll start to wobble in there start wearing on one side depending which way the gear is being pulled and you're making the hole bigger and putting in another brass bushing or a brass bushing to take place of the brass that wore out here that would be the only reason for that is because your holes start wobbling out so let me get this on there when you're scrubbing it try to get a soft cloth and don't push hard because if you push hard that's got grit in it and it's going to start scratching the plate not that it's going to give a heart attack, but it's nicer just to see the shine. So let's see what I can do with this. So because of my lighting might be too bright and whatnot, that's why I wiggle it around like this. I haven't buffed it off yet, but this side I've used a cleaner on. This here's got a little bit smear of the cleaner, but you can see down here the color of it compared to using the cleaner. If this is what trips your trigger, go ahead and use a little bit of that. And like I say, be light about it. Don't be pushing too hard, otherwise you'll end up with scratches. And I try to do a little bit of a circular motion to get this off and also to help prevent myself from uh, pushing too hard, I guess, because it's not coming clean. Give it time and... I don't know if that's acid in here that helps clean this or what it is, but it just wiping it on and almost wiping it off, I'd swear it looks a lot better than what it did before you started. So, 
to keep things from being confusing, which I forgot to mention when you before you take all these gears out that belong inside the movement, everything you took off on the outside, you should get a picture of it so you can separate it away so you can focus only on what goes inside the movement. I got a cup. And it's actually kind of too big of a cup, but I'm looking at trying to get it so it'll be a little more stable compared to this cup. It's really trying to fall off a lot more. I don't necessarily have small cups because I like large cups. If I can have a cup of coffee, I want a cup of coffee. <laughs> so anyway, this here's what we're going to be doing to get this back together again. And let's see, I have the pendulum part and the fan kind of close, it's off to the side, but right now we're going to go ahead and try to put, put this together. So according to my picture, this is the angle we need it at so we can tell for sure where everything goes. You can use a screwdriver, or if you wanted to buy one of these tools, it's meant to push the gear, gear into place or pull it. Snug some nuts on there, not real tight, and then we can get the rest of the gears in. So the reason for these nuts going now is to hold, I got a few of the gears in and why not start snugging it up. Now this one nut here, I think someone messed that up because it's hard to turn. It'll go on, but we have to use the pliers to get it on. These other ones that are more important right now just to finger tight, that's what I'm going to need. Now so far these are only finger tight because I don't want to put a lot of pressure on these pins because you can break them off or bend them and then they will break. Here we got them all in. I can put that nut on check it out again, move the gears up and down, make sure I, I'm not pressuring any of them, and also that helps make sure you have each one of these holes before you start, start cinching the nuts down. Okay, I just took the socket and finger tightened them, so they're tighter than what your fingers would do. Yeah, that's falling out because I don't have the clip on it yet. That's fine. I'm just checking to make sure. Let me get this back in its hole. No, we'll do with that in a minute. But anyway, you can tell this is going around good. Should come to the side. It's 
So I can go ahead and tighten that up. I'm not going to tighten it up until I get this back in the hole. So now I know I have it all together. The nuts tightened down. I'm going to go ahead and oil everything that's out here because some of these places that you oil will be covered up or hard to find with all the levers on here. So this is the best time to oil it and you know you have it. Remember if you get too much oil on here just take a tissue and dab each one of the places that you put the oil on. You only need a very little bit because number one this is a one day clock but two the more oil you leave behind the quicker this thing's going to pick up dust and slow your clock down. The dust part all the Depends on the environment you live in, whether you have a bunch of dogs or whether, let's say you live in Arizona and it's real dusty outside or you live by a highway. That dust comes in your house. I mean, you'll know by how often you have to dust your house. And that dust also comes in because you have the chains that are being pulled up in, pulling the dust in also and your pendulum swinging and so that's basically kind of why they consider these a dirty clock because they're open to the air the more holes the more dust gets in So I was having a problem with this one not wanting to fall back down. It had one of these in there. But I got to thinking I don't have enough room for this one as thick as it is. And I got to looking. There's one of them in here that happens to be, you can see it's, well, I can't show you now, but it was a thinner one slides right in there and now this drops like it should like i say sometimes you want to pull your hair out okay before i get any more on here you're looking at this here this needs to drop down to the mouth or be in that mouth area and you see here it's not and so what I need to do is separate this movement which I'll take this one nut off and see if I can do it that way and what it is is you have this oh, there it is there's a pin right there the warning pin and it's in the wrong place so what I need to do is that gear that the warning pins on I need to separate it away from this gear here see it's got this big gear we'll call it on the end that controls that one I have to separate it from it because I need to let the clock know I want this Pac-Man which is on this gear down here I want it moved I don't want to move the Pac-Man. He's in the right place. I want to move the warning gear to let it go around a little bit further. Let's just kind of trigger this and I'll show you. So it needs to be right there. Like I say, they don't always fall all the way down, but you want it as close to the throat of the Pac-Man. So let me get this loosened up. Pull that gear up and away from there and then turn it back. So now I, that I have that timing issue taken care of, now's the time to get these in to see whether I'm getting a gong 
cuckoo. So let me put the rods in and get the keepers on there and then we can trigger this and see what it's doing. So I'll try to trigger this. We have a gong coo coo. It's it's not falling all the way. Oh, it needs to be bent a little bit. And it's just starting to pick up this other rod. Gong coo coo. Now, like I told you, the gong, as you'll watch, doesn't move very far. And so what I'm going to do, because that's why I haven't installed the clips yet. This is setting in there like this. You can already tell there's a little bit of a bend. And let's just bend it just a little bit more to try to get more of a gong out of this thing. I'm looking inside here where the star wheel is and when these paddles are hitting. And I'm trying to hold these up to make it so they will hit at the proper time, we'll say, instead of getting tangled up. So there we go, gong, coo, coo. And it should stop right there and we have just, look, just a little bit further to go. So realistically, I'd like to set this so it has room to ramp up instead of already starting to pull on this or this. And it's just a little bit. And the only way I can do that is this here, the teeth. Where is it hitting? On this bigger gear inside here. And so what I need to do is get this gear away from there which might be easier to loosen it and move this gear back and then turn it just a little bit to get it in the time where I'm looking for. Gong, coo, coo. And it stopped immediately. Gong, coo, coo. That's all we care about is that last cuckoo. I'm very happy with that. So let me get that nut back on and we'll go from there. There, I got my three Eclipse in, so these will stay in place. Now, that's sitting where it needs to. I'll keep pressure on it. And we'll turn the, we'll call it the minute hand. I'm using this gear to turn it. So that's too close. So I'm going to see if I can pull it off and do one, one back. That's supposed to be the 12 o'clock position. And let's do the twelve thirty. Twelve 
and hopefully I don't have my hands on all the gears, levers, whatever. So 12.30 is coming up right there. One o'clock. So this isn't popping all the way down. So I have to work on this a little bit more because this is, let's see. The spring isn't much of a spring. Okay, the object is right now, we need this to drop down for the 12 o'clock, be able to pass, have the half hour and one o'clock drop up here, which a half hour is not normally supposed to drop. So it's hard to turn the slow. Here it drops clear for the 12. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And do the half hour. There's our half hour. Do the one o'clock. There's our one o'clock, one thirty. One, two, okay, this, this here is one, two, now I need the 2.30, it's kind of hard doing this, with getting two hands moving it, There's our half hour. It's hard catching this. I'm using one finger to turn the gear down here. Two, three. I don't, this didn't come with hands. So I can't throw a hand on there to show you it turning, but this is turning. There's the half hour. So let's zoom it around over here to our 12 o'clock again. This here is our 12 o'clock position down here that we're trying to get this to that. So this should be 11. Let's just zip by it real quick. There's our 11. 11.30 should be coming up. And there's our half an hour for 11.30. This should be our 12. And get down. My fingers are in the way of. Oops. Now I got to start over again. Bar 12 is right there. Half an hour should be here. The reason this clock knows what the half hour is, take this back off again. This uh, two point star, I'm going to call it. One side is shorter. The other side is just a little bit taller and a little bit taller is what makes this thing trigger to know it's a hour. So let me turn this back a little bit. There we go. Oops, I had my finger in the way. So 
there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I had plenty of clearance in here. When I bring this around for the half hour, this is not supposed to fall necessarily and touch the snail ever. It might on the one o'clock side. So there's our half hour. Here comes our one o'clock. And we still have enough room on here. It's getting tight, but I could move it one more tooth over to make it a little bit nicer. Let's see how everything else goes. This here comes the half hour. Here comes the two o'clock. One, two. Now, like I say, that's awful close. I'm going to bring this thing back one, one tooth here. So it hits a little bit closer to that. Just bring it around to the half hour. See, this doesn't fall all the way down the half hour. I like that sitting more in the middle. One two, three. So let's zoom it back around to the 12 o'clock. Take my finger off of making the, letting this thing, let's call it cuckoo. Okay, that's going to be the 11. Let's get this thing taken care of. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. My finger back on it. Let's bring this thing around for the half hour. There's our half hour. Let's go for our twelve o'clock. Hard to do the 12 when I'm going too fast with the gear. We're going to come back to that one. Here comes our half hour. They like said didn't fall all the way. That's what the half hour is supposed to do. And back to our one. I'm going to spin it around again to get to our 12 o'clock and see just what's going on with it. Make sure, try to keep my fingers off the levers. Okay, we'll get rid of the 11 o'clock. Just get spun around it. Okay, get my finger back on there. Carefully get the half hour. There's our half hour. Keep my fingers out of the way of everything. Okay, there it dropped all the way down for the 12 o'clock. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I put my washer on there. You don't want to forget that. And then we'll put our big E clip on there. Now that big washer there is to keep 
your snail on there. It won't pass because that washer's on there. If that wasn't on there, your time would keep changing on you, especially if your clock leaned forward a little bit, stay out there. That's not a good thing. So that's another thing you can look at too while you're here. If that's clear out there, in which your hand nut is going to fit on here, so that's another thing you need to pay attention to when you're putting your clock together, making sure this is down so you can get your hand on there. Otherwise, if it goes clear up, this here is passing and it'll never know what time it is or when to ring where if this is down where it's supposed to be you put your this is a new enough movement you put your brass nut nut on there that holds the hand set your hand on there this is the minute we're talking about because the hour goes on here so once that's on that's usually where it's nice to have your cup rounded washer we'll call it that sets on there and then you can screw your decorative nut on here so there we go now i need to stick some chain on here and make sure everything's working okay this here wire here is a spring wire and it wasn't pushing hard enough if at all on here in order to get this thing to drop properly so i had to bend it clear out this way to get enough of a enough strength to get this to cuckoo each time it's that thin little wire is a spring wire kind of like the same of this one here that goes for the gong to give it more of a ring. See, right now it's not pushing too hard. You can see right there it is. Now it's resting on there good. It's not leaving the space and it can actually move. So it's going to actually give them a, a decent ring. And also I, I did bend that pad a little more in order to give this more of a movement. So anyway, on here, I'm going to, to be able to test run this. I need to put some of my chain on here and hang it on the wall like the other clocks. And which this is one of the feet that you'd stick on here make sure it's not in the way at least this is the system I have some people have other systems this is the easiest one to do is two feet down here and then the hanging bracket part up here I'll go get it because I have it on another clock I'll show you real quick that there is hanging on the wall on the system I have and this, that clock there, I, I cleaned and rebushed, and it's been running beautiful ever since. So let me take that one down and get the feet under this movement. So we forgot to put this on, so let's get it on. And you see it's loose in there, so you re-snug these up a little bit. Don't get carried away. So we got this on the proper side now. I messed up when I first put it on there. I got my legs on here. And so we're ready to hang it on the wall. Set a pendulum and a couple weights on here. And see how things run so we're still ticking away 
Although I will admit, it threw me for a second. The cuckoo weight was dropping way too fast compared to the ticking weight. And as I mentioned in the video when I was I had it back together, this doesn't have the hands on it so it doesn't push the snail in where it's supposed to be and it'll work its way out and then it'll just cuckoo 12 times every time it's time for it to cuckoo. Push the snail back in and it's doing just fine. This clock's been ticking beautifully so I think it's ready. So that's how I was able to fix this, fix as in clean and oil this movement. Hopefully you've learned something from it. Don't forget to subscribe because it's free. God bless and until next time, let's see what kind of clock we're going to work on.